Good evening. Good evening, and we want to welcome everyone to our Nurse Talk Zoom tonight. So Dory and I do this every Tuesday night, 7 p.m. Central, 8 Eastern. And it's just to share this technology with people because as nurses, we just have a passion for sharing and for helping people with their health, obviously. So we're trying to change things up a little bit with our Zoom each week. So just forgive us if we kind of get off track, which is <laughs> we want to keep it interesting and keep it exciting too and just share more about the business as well as the technology. So first of all, I want to give the disclaimer, redox signaling molecules do not diagnose, treat, or cure any medical condition. They just give the body what it needs on a cellular level to help the body heal itself. And um, that being said, it's just um, non-toxic, native to the body, no, no harm can be done using these molecules. So with that, um, we have an awesome guest tonight, Dr. Vicki Sparks. She's from San Antonio, Texas, and we will introduce her a little bit later in the program. We're gonna go through a few things between Doria and I and show a short video before we get to her. So Doria, do you want to start at this point? Sure. So thank you all for uh, being on the Zoom uh, this evening. And if uh, any of you are new, we welcome you here tonight. Um, so I'm Doria Stewart. Um, I'm a very blessed to be a, uh, a running partner. I'm not going to say co-host because we're running partners in this um, nurse talks with Cindy. And um, I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. Um, I've been a nurse for um, close to 42 years. And uh, this uh, technology that you're about to hear shortly was brought to me by a very trusted friend, um, a dentist here actually where I live. And he mainly uh, brought this to my attention because he knew that I would be retiring soon. And so he said, this might be something that you might want to take a look at. And I said, okay. And you know, I just, um, you know, looked at the, some of the videos that you're going to be seeing this evening. We have some others that, you know, um, that you can also uh, look at. Um, I was very intrigued by it. I had not remembered the technology in nursing school, um, but because I'm open to alternative ways of healing, such as chiropractic care and massage therapy and oils, um, I thought this could be something that, you know, might be beneficial for me. So I also, like I said, saw it as an opportunity because of retiring, you know, in a few years. Um, so I looked at the technology, um, did a deep dive, went on to PubMed, which is a research uh, engine for a lot of medical professionals that has over 30,000 articles on the technology. And then I also, um, you know, went into um, some other sites that, you know, that he sent to me. And I thought, you know, I'm all about preventive medicine, um, well, pre preventive and promotion, promotion of health. And so I decided, you know, I'd just go ahead and get on the product. I really didn't see, didn't think I had any health challenges at all. I thought, you know, um, I'm not on any medications, I, I, even though I've been a nurse as long as I have, um, you know, I have dealt with just some minor, um, you know, discomfort in joints and back, no, you know, uh, lots of stress and uh, lack of sleep. So got on the product. Um, I would say within the first three days, I slept through the night, eight hours. Um, it was uh, deep sleep. I continue to, I've been on the product for four years. I continue to sleep very well from that. And then uh, I would say within 30 to 45 days, all the discomfort in all the joints and back had diminished. Um, so this product is, you know, the, as you'll hear in, an, in a video that we'll be showing you um, is about communication. So, you know, we live and die at the cellular level and uh, something I'll be on the rest of my life. Um, it has truly changed my life and others that I've shared it with. So thank you, Cindy. Thank you, Doria, for sharing that. Um, and I'll give you a little bit about my background, my testimony. So I'm a hospice nurse here in Nashville, Tennessee. And I was already on a journey looking for more alternative natural ways to heal my body. I'm not a high proponent of medication unless it's definitely needed. And I know there are cases that it is needed, but in our technical, our um, technically our mainstream Western medicine, I feel like medications sometimes are overused and there's a lot of side, effect, side effects with those medications. So Doria, when you think about health challenges, think about how they start. 
So most things start on a cellular level. And at this point, how do we know that? So at what point you think about, so I had had an issue and a lot of people will go to the doctor, have lab tests run and the tests come back and they're normal. The doctor says, okay, you don't have this issue. So at what point do these lab tests detect our health challenges? We don't know that. And to my knowledge, there's not any test out there that can test for redox imbalance. And there's a book I refer to a lot of times that talks about um, one disease, it's called One Disease Redox Imbalance. And basically it, it says all diseases or all health challenges stem for a redox imbalance. So if we can't test for that, you know, that's a challenge and that's difficult. So all diseases are actually the result of the downstream of a redox imbalance. So at some point, I think we'll have these tests that we can measure redox balance, hopefully in the future, and that would be a game changer as well. So what I like about um, the company is the fact with this product that we're changing lives and we're making a difference and we're getting paid for it. And that's awesome. So when you have a technology that is number one, non-toxic, native to your body, and it's a category creator, there's no one else out there that has this, that's a business opportunity. And so with this company, and there's a great video called the ASEA Genesis video that tells how the company started. But when they started, they tried to go through FDA approval. Their plans were to, they bought the company, bought the technology, had it patented, and their plans were to sell it to a pharmaceutical company. But in order for a drug, and Dr. Sparks can go into this probably later if you'd like, but to be a drug, you have to have an LD50, which is a lethal dose 50, meaning that your medication or product, at what level does that drug kill 50% of the participants, which are usually lab animals in the trial studies? So at what point, and they go through every medication like this. So ASEA didn't have an LD50. This product does not cause harm. So they couldn't classify it as a drug or a medication. So the, at the most, they said it was a supplement. But I think we like to call it more of a bioreplenishment product, and it you know does it on the cellular level. So if you want to watch the ASEA Genesis video, it's on YouTube. It's an amazing. It's about a sixteen minute video, but it's very worth it. And how the how the company refused to sell this after they found out what the company what the pharmaceutical company wanted to do with the technology. So it's pretty amazing. If you'll go to that and watch that, I think you'll be very pleased. So we are going to go. Um, Dory, was there anything else before we do the video? No, just that, um, you know, I mean, if you're previous about the, what we're going to be seeing, it's just a short video. Um, and, then, you know, again, um, to elaborate that this technology is 10 to 15 years ahead of our time. So you're going to just see a short video about what this is so that it can kind of settle in your mind. You think, OK, it's just another supplement. No, it's a lot different from that, because like Cindy said, it is a category creator and it's a lot different than um, nutritional supplements that people take. So. Um, the videos will just go into a short explanation of what that is. Okay. Let me find where I put it. I'm always having new shoes. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. There you go. Be bigger. Hi, Alan Noble here, and I wanted to just share with you a few thoughts on why ASEA Redox is such an incredible health technology. You know, for two decades, science said what's inside this beautiful blue bottle could not exist outside the human body. This is a technology that is 10 to 15 years ahead of its time. You know, we now have science experts comparing this breakthrough to the discovery of DNA, the discovery of penicillin, and it truly does represent the single greatest health science breakthrough that we will probably see in our lifetime. I think a great place to start is to get really clear on what a SIA redox is not. It's not a vitamin, it's not a mineral, it's not an antioxidant, it's not an exotic juice, it's not an essential oil, it's not a CBD oil. This technology goes beyond nutrition and ingredients, and yet it can impact your health at a depth that no other supplement has ever come close to achieving. For many people, a SIA redox represents the missing link when it comes to better health and vitality. So what is ASEA? So to understand this breakthrough, you've got to realize that your body is the most complex communication network 
on Earth. Every second of every day, your cells are passing tremendous amounts of information within the cell, cells to cells, throughout all the systems and organs of the body. Now, you can't see it, you can't feel it, you can't touch it, you can't smell it, but this signaling and communication is going on every second of every day that you're alive. Now, any breakdown in this signaling and communication and you cannot achieve your full health and healing potential. Let me give you a simple example. So imagine your home's on fire and you call the fire department. Now they could be the best fire department in the city. The big red truck, the firefighters, the fire hose, the ladder, everything they need to put out the fire. But what if you have a bad cell signal? What if they don't get the message? Maybe you have only one bar, maybe the call keeps dropping or there's cross communication. They don't get the message and your home goes up in flames. It's the same in our body. If your cells can't signal, little else matters. And so ASEA Redox represents the world's first and only signaling technology that can amplify and clarify this critical cell signal. And the difference in people's lives is absolutely astonishing. So ASEA Redox really does represent the missing link to better health and vitality. And I would encourage you, just dig a little deeper, really understand what this technology might be able to do for you and your family. And before we go, let me pull out my, my trusted tube of Renew28. This is our topical version of the same technology. And when you apply the, the, the topical signaling gel to uh, wrinkles, elasticity, stretch marks, cellulite, um, age spots, redness, irritation, the results are absolutely astonishing. So again, dig a little deeper, understand our technology and two beautiful delivery systems and see what it might do for you. So this is Alan Noble thanking you for your time today and bye for now. Okay, I'm back. Okay, Doria, do you want to go ahead and introduce our wonderful guest tonight. Yes, I'd be honored to. So I'd like to introduce uh, Dr. Vicki Sparks. She's a medical uh, physician. Um, she is a graduate of the University of Texas Medical School of San Antonio. She's board certified in two specialties, emergency medicine and hospice and palliative medicine. Dr. Sparks and her staff were frontline workers during the COVID-19 health emergency. So I just want to say or stop right there and thank you for your extreme dedication during that difficult time. I know that was, uh, I was in it as well, so I understand. Uh, she has served as a group instructor for physical diagnosis for first and second year medical students at the University of Texas. In addition, as an instructor, she had the privilege of teaching on advanced uh, comparative animal physiology and brain and behavior. Uh, she created a course along with a mu musical therapist on music and aging brain. Uh, she sold her practice and now devotes her time as, a, as president and CEO of her practice, improving health through education and redox cellular health. So um, Dr. Vicki Sparks, I, um, would like for you at this time to share with us how Redox crossed your path. Okay, yeah. Uh, well, just basically, uh, I was in my office one day and a patient came in, a new patient, and <laughs> she had uh, beautiful looking skin. I don't know why I said that, but. Uh, Anyway, I didn't notice, you know, how young she looked. And she told me because I had a habit of going through everybody's uh, uh, medications and supplements that they were taking. Uh, so she told me she was using Renew 28, something called Renew 28 and uh, ASEA, drinking ASEA. What is that? And she said it was redox signaling molecules. And I, I did not know what that was um, because that was not in my biochemistry book in, in uh, med, med school. Um, you know, I uh, wanted to be a doctor since I was in high school. I did get into uh, medical school after college. I graduated from uh, Texas State. It was Southwest Texas at that time. And uh, did get into uh, the surgery program. But 
I did my first two uh, years of surgery, uh, internship and residency, first year residency in San Antonio. Then I was going to have to move to Houston to finish. And my husband, who was an attorney here and clerking for a federal judge, and my daughter was like eight or nine. And they said, well, they didn't, they weren't going to move with me. So I said, okay, well, I thought for a minute and I thought, well, okay, emergency medicine I'd heard of and uh, just been made uh, the newest medical specialty. I could get board certified in that. So I, again, I had plenty of good training in my uh, surgery, uh, post-grad surgery training to work in the emergency room. So that's what I started doing. And I ended, ended up getting board certified. But then um, along the way, I, I thought, well, maybe I can keep people out of the emergency room. How would I do that? <laughs> so I opened a general practice. You know, I saw 12 years and up. So it wasn't a classical family practice. But um, and then I uh, got into learned uh, something about uh, nutrition and uh, functional medicine from my, my dentist, I think it was, uh, invited me to a uh, functional medicine meeting. And I met an, another uh, functional medicine practitioner, learned a little bit about that. Um, we did not have much in the way of nutrition or you know, how the body systems work together in med school. They were all separated out. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I learned a little bit about nutrition and, and other things that uh, keep people healthy. Uh, and then, so then the pa my patient came in and uh, Deb Rule, I can say her name because she's in, you know, she's my upline sponsor. And she came in and she, because she made the appointment, because it's going to sound weird, she had a problem at the other end of her GI tract that she had been using the Renew 28 on. And when I examined her, the problem was gone. It wasn't there. So I, I got to reassure her. <laughs> and I, you know, I never heard of Redox. So I went to look that up in PubMed, like Doria said, uh, and learned about it. I saw all the studies and I also looked in my own biochemistry book and um, you know I, I had heard of the Krebs cycle of course it, pretty much every medical professional has heard about that um, that's one one example of, of cell signaling but um, I signed up really because uh, Deb's skin looked so good <laughs> So I started using the, the topical and then in August of 2019, about a month later, I started taking the drink and I had, I made the decision to have a, a major surgery uh, for a uh, condition that was, I was told was, uh, you know, uh, pre uh, rogue cells. And uh, that, uh, the ASEA helped me get through that. And I mean, that, that is my emergency room in, the, in a bottle and in a tube, uh, Renew 28 in the uh, ARS, the redox signaling solution, because any problem that comes up short of a major traumatic amputation or something like that, I can handle with uh, either one of those, the cell signaling. It's just amazing. You know, I guess, I don't know, um, I didn't really, um, have too much uh, doubt about uh, whether it worked or not or whether it was the real thing because I could see it in my patient. So, uh, you know, I, I signed up as an associate right away and started taking it. And every time, uh, you know, I've had any kind of little uh, thing happen to me. Uh, in August of 2020, I had a patient come in who... <laughs> And I'm just chuckling to myself because when COVID, the shut, COVID shutdown came along, we were told we couldn't see sick patients. So I thought that was a little weird, but then, you know, later on I understood. But uh, um, anyway, this one patient came in on a Friday afternoon and he had a slight headache. It wasn't a typical COVID case, but he wanted to be tested. So I tested him. And uh, on Monday morning, I woke up with a really high fever. So. Sure enough, he did have COVID, but we all tested negative at my office. So, and I just uh, doubled up on my IC and I felt fine the next day. So I had to take a stay out of work, but uh, for whatever time they uh, 
mandated, I can't remember now, but five, seven days, something like that. Um, anyway, I, I'm sold on it. I think it's, uh, like everybody says, a, a new category. And I, I'm so thankful to have know something that, um, so it starts to work at the cellular level and it, it, it just, it, it helps people with whatever they need. So you may not even know. Um, I talked to an emergency room friend of mine um, yesterday. I was following up with him. He said he didn't really feel anything. Uh, I said, you know, I suggested, well, maybe he quit taking it and see how you feel. <laughs> I didn't really want him to do that. But then I said, maybe you, if you have enough, uh, you could just take uh, like twice as much, take eight ounces uh, and see what happens. Uh, he does have a health challenge, but he uh, he does exercise, take care of himself. He works in the emergency room still. Um, but he said he hadn't noticed too much. I also mentioned, you know, Alan Noble has also said that he hasn't noticed very much with his, but he still takes it. Uh, I think maybe uh, everybody's different. Maybe people have a different internal stress. I mean, I've always been a high high level, uh, high stress, and, and maybe like a, a, a sheepdog, not sheepdog, but a uh, <laughs> um, herding dog, a border collie. That's how I characterize myself. I'm trying to make sure everybody's in order <laughs> all the time. Anyway, um, I guess that's pretty much my story is about how, about how I uh, learned about it. So, so, any so let me ask you, um, if I was your uh, so you're seeing patients, you have a private practice now, you um, have retired from emergency medicine. So are you more in the functional um, arena right now with? Uh... Oh, no. So I uh, had a general practice after emergency medicine and I um, so it was able to sell it and I re retired um, December 31st, 2021 from my office practice. So now, you know, I'm just uh, spreading the word about um, the redox signaling to um, friends and, uh, you know, whoever I come across. Okay. Uh, so, to educate so, them. so give me a scenario. So let's say I'm your friend, um, you know, Doria, you haven't seen me in a long time. How would you uh, share? How would you uh, approach me? Oh, hey, how are you doing? And you're going to say, um, yeah, uh, Not so good. Oh, uh -oh, what's going on? Oh, uh, well, I, I've been dealing with um, some, um, you know, just not feeling good, feeling fatigue, um, not getting a lot of rest, um, having, um, you know, some discomfort in some different areas. I uh, deal with, you know, that where I live here in Georgia, we deal with a lot of the pollen. So I have issues related to that. And you know, just been tired all the time. Okay. And uh, so are you taking any medications? You know, I take, um, you know, uh, some over the counter medications to help with some of those, but it doesn't seem like it's working very well. Okay. Um, and of course, uh, exercise and what did you say about your sleep? Yes, I'm just, I, you know, I, I work as a nurse and I'm just really stressed, you know, as you know, as working in the medical field. Um, so, you know, I'm not getting much rest. Um, so um, I've come across a technology that um, is, uh, it's called a redox signaling technology. Have you heard of it? No, I sure haven't. It's um, about, it's um, a supplement that can help you with a variety of different problems. Um, let me test you and then I'll whip out my Redox uh, Renew 28 and, you know, have you do the, um, probably the squat and then um, stand up, put on the gel. I'll do the, like the Tyndall swipe and, and see what kind of reaction you have there and see if you're interested. Okay. All righty. Okay. So in your own words, I mean, you know, we have a lot of medical professionals that are on this evening. Um, some people are in uh, health coaches and other wellness arenas. So how in your own term uh, and not using medical terms, how would you describe what these molecules do? Um, so they, <laughs> um, 
Yeah, well, I think the the uh, analogy of the house on fire is a good one where uh, you uh, the fire department can't get there because they don't have a signal. Um, you're um, basically the way I understand it is, and maybe uh, not, you know, maybe lay people could understand it too. I just tell them, you know, it's, uh, um, well, you know what, that's too complicated. Um, so I've got something that's natural to your body. Um, it's just like your own um, intracellular fluid. So your cells have, uh, are made up of, uh, and, and most people won't really know that, right? Because most people, the guy at the gym probably hasn't ever looked in a microscope. But um, so it's the same thing. It's native to your body. It signals your cells to operate the way uh, God intended them to operate. Your cells are made to uh, detect trouble and repair and replace. So it's an ongoing process. And if you can't do that, then um, um, all kinds of chronic or conditions occur. Um, and I think that's pretty much what I would say. Yeah. Okay. I like, I, mean, I like the. Oh, I'm sorry. I was going to say, I like the, you know, the, the, uh, the Tyndall swipe or the, uh, the gel experience, because that, that, that actually shows people that, that it does work. Yes. Yes. So we know that um, from age puberty onward, you know, we lose 1% of these molecules every year. So, you know, when I first got on the product, I, I'm, I'm 66 and that was four years ago. So I was at a deficit. So it's a way to, like you said, a bioreplenishment, a way to refill those coffers, so to speak, to kind of, you know, allow this, that communication to be much more enhanced so that it can, you know, talk to the other cells wherever they're, like you said, wherever there's da a damage and it begins to repair it and restore it. it right. So. Right. Exactly. You know. Yeah. Okay. And, you know, we have, um, you know, the blue bottle, which is, you know, the, our gift of hope, we call it, the God molecules in these, in this bottle. We know that the, uh, our company, as um, Cindy had alluded to, is a, uh, you know, very integritist company. They spend a lot of time in research, um, you know, in, the, in lots of different studies. And I know that they did a study called Tort, uh, Tort Labs did a study and which upregulated the uh, g genetic pathways, which helped with what there were five like key areas that it helped with. You know, um, if I remember, it was like inflammation, uh, gut health. You know, and you had that patient come into your office that had, you know, I know probably had in the in that private area, but it helped with that. So yeah, you know, it helps with gut health and. Um, inflammatory response, immune, uh, immune status, and cardiovascular helps with that. And then uh, I think I'm leaving that one here. Um, trying Hormone. to uh, Hormones. Hormones, yeah. Hormone modulation, yeah. So it's, that's pretty powerful. So this, these molecules really help every system in the body. And without them, you know, like you said, little else matters. Yeah. Well, interesting thing about that study was that they gave, um, 25 people, eight ounces of uh, redox solution, 25 people, they gave salt water and they gave 10 people um, nothing. So, uh, or I guess the 10 people were just in the study and then they drew their blood and tested them. Um, and the only people that had upregulation were the people on the redox. Which is a game changer, isn't it? That study. It is. Yep. Yeah, it's not a big study, but uh, it's a significant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The way the way I look at it, Doctor Sparks, it's really just taking the leap of faith with this technology because if it's non toxic and native to your body, why would you not want to try it, and why would you not want to share it with people? But it just amazes me. And like you mentioned, the gentleman said they didn't feel anything. So I, I go and ask people, well, are you feeling your cholesterol medication working? And, and you can't feel it. You would have to measure it from a lab test. Uh -huh. So, 
you know, it just, it blows my mind that people will take anything the doctor prescribes. They don't read that long list of side effects. They don't read the interactions that they could have with other medications. Um, but yet they question this. They want to try it. I mean, they don't have anything to lose. I mean, it's going to work at some point on everybody, anything that has cells. But it's just giving, being patient with it, taking the right amount. Like you said, sometimes you may have to increase your dose. But I just, I, yeah. I think a big barrier is that uh, it, the insurance doesn't pay for it. Right. But right. people will pay a lot of money for uh uh, over-the-counter supplements that are, you know, n not, uh, now there are some, but you have, there, you can't buy them at HEB. <laughs> That's our local grocery <laughs> store chain. Um, some that are really, uh, pharmaceutically, uh, um, uh, intact, you know, what's on the, in the pill is actually what's on the label um made like a drug but uh, those you have to order and those are more expensive uh but anyway yeah people uh pay a lot of money for uh, things that uh that really don't work but you know some of them do uh, when i when i learned about uh, you know other th the importance of uh, nutrition of which we really i don't remember any any class on nutrition in a med school seriously because i was there quite a while back but now that now it's different but um so um you know some things over the counter you can take uh and and, and do fine vitamin d you know but um i kept in my office some uh, prescription grade supplements that i sold for uh what it cost me plus a little bit for the uh shipping and handling and and people started would would say they felt better when they took those uh, you know the vitamins the multivitamins the really good ones, um, so you know some of the, some, but anyway my point is people do spend a lot of money on uh, a lot of things to uh, fix what you know what's it, whatever it is. Yeah, well, like we've learned. See the, I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Now, I just want to see the value in, you know, this and the beauty of this. I mean, you can still take supplements and your medication. We don't tell anybody to go off their medication, but because this allows, you know, I call that like your, um, your nutrition, your, your, sup, your supplements, your, like you said, vitamin D or vitamin C or, you know, CB, all of that is the building material. So all of the redox, the C redox does is allow even that to get into the system you know, quicker because it's innate. Like you said, it's it's bioidentical. It's innate. It's already in us. Where those types of things are natural. So only a percentage of what people, like you said, are taking, are not getting the full absorption of those, uh, you know, supplements. So yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. But, uh, yeah. It's like we've learned too with no matter what you're putting in your body, you can put in all the nutrients, even the food. But if your cells are still not communicating, you're not getting the full benefit. So like Doria said, it just helps everything work better because it increases that communication throughout your body. So, yeah. Yep, absolutely. Yes. And I think that's uh, the answer to keeping uh, for people staying out of the emergency room. <laughs> right. So, Dr. Sparks, you said you're a palliative doctor, have palliative background. Yes. Uh, so I, um, you know, I'm also uh, board certified in hospice and palliative medicine. Mm -hmm. I also, uh, you know, started seeing, well, uh, when people get uh, toward the end of life or uh, have a situation where um, their life is definitely limited, what uh, can we do uh, to help them? So I started getting interested in that. And I did serve uh, for eight years as the medical director for uh, hospice here in San Antonio. Texas is not a certificate of need state. So there, you know, we've got about maybe 150 hospices. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> but the one, the one that I was with was the one that uh, offered hope and honored life. And, it, and they would go to any length, you know, within reason to you know any length uh, to make the, the patients uh, experience better so uh, it was and we had music therapy awesome. um, yeah you know and and, and uh, um, you know I've heard stories of um, 
people recovering when they started using the uh, and, and, and graduating graduating from hospice uh, when they started using some redox molecules. I don't have that experience with me uh, uh, right now, but uh, you know, I wouldn't probably, you know, I don't know. That's why I know about this. And I'm a kind of fraidy cat to, to go back into hospice because I now I know about the cell signaling. <laughs> you know, it might not be too popular. I mean, I might not be able to refrain from mentioning it, but I, could, I guess what I could do is just to have it um, provide information and have if they wanted to sign up they could sign up under somebody else but that's you know I don't know why I diverted over to that topic but um. well I was I'm just going to kind of comment on the same thing so as a hospice nurse that's what I struggle with because I can't share this with my patients and I know there's mm -hmm. a lot of patients that I do see that this could really help now there's probably a lot that are past the point you know I never say never uh -huh. but it's it's still that's what really hurts that I can't share this. Now I have shared with some patients, family members after the mm -hmm. fact. Um, yeah, because I can't look like I'm prospering, obviously profiting from hospice, which I would never do, but, you know, I just wish I could get it out there to the world and, and let everybody know about this. So we're just taking one person at a time. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. I mean, I'd have to be, uh, in, in the situation to, to know really know what to do, but I, I uh, it, it, it seems like a conflict of interest, but it may not be, you know, uh, you know, we're uh, healthcare workers. We uh, have, one, have the patient's best in mind. So I don't know, um, mm -hmm. but <laughs> you know, um, you know I, I'll tell you a story sometime off, uh, off camera. <laughs> We know that this is not a cure for all. All it is, is we, if we give the body what it needs, the body will heal itself. So that's really, you know, if you, that's the key there. And we know that we've heard testimonies when people have been in hospice that, you know, it might have improved their, uh, vi you know, their uh, viability, you know, until the end, you know, whether it be deal with, you know, some discomfort or lack of sleep or, you know, it's helped them in, in that way. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm right there too, as nurses, it's hard. We, we came into this field as medical professionals that, you know, our hearts are and passion is to help people, you know, and, you know, we, I'm sure, you know, we, I know in my teaching, I've said, you know, maybe need to take some, you know, vitamin C or something like that, but I feel like we should mm -hmm. have some type of liberty because it is a supplement like, you know, uh, Cindy shared, you know, because it uh, doesn't have any legal dose 50. That's why it's classified as a supplement, you know? So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, my hands are tied to, I work in a gastroenterology clinic and there's so many people, young people from, I mean, we just, I just had a really young person, 19 years of age with a lot of, you know, gut issues. And we know that, you know, by the tort lab study that it helps the, that population. So it's, uh, and I, you know, of course, my patients are under propothol and I'm a recovery. <laughs> so I could probably, you know, <laughs> I, I would love to tell them about this, but I don't, you know, um, but I have, I should say that I have talked to family members, just like Cindy had said. So that's one, one, one way that you could talk to them. But anyway, but this is a great opportunity for, you know, like you said, now you're in um, just an, a health educator sharing about redox and then, you know, as if there's health coaches, wellness coaches, you know, it's a way that we can get the word out to people to let them know what this is and the truth of it, you know, and so if there's probably some people on this call that are kind of skeptical because this is made from salt water. And when you hear that, it's like, just take the elephant out of the room. It's made with salt water, but it's infused with energy, which creates these molecules. And it is a, it is a breakthrough for sure. So I like that term infused with energy. Um, I was at uh, um, luncheon today of the Bear County Medical Society and ran into some old friends. Uh, and uh, one of them is a, a, a doctor that I worked with actually in his urgent care clinic um, that he started here in San Antonio. He just uh, sold it, but uh, he's got some, uh, health issues and I said well 
what do you, he said, asked me what I was doing. I said, I was working with a biotech company um, that has a, a cellular health um, product. Uh, have you heard of redox signaling? I knew he hadn't because we're from more or less the same era. And he said, no, what is that? And as, as I started to tell him, he, his eyes glazed over. <laughs> I was trying to approach it from the biochemistry uh, point of view, but when I told him it was salt water from Salt Lake City, then he really uh, looked at me, but I'm gonna send him uh, some information and uh, um, a couple other doctors there too. I'm just gonna you know, start um, seeing what happens. Mm -hmm. Maybe get it uh, out there to the, the and, it's, and it's not, um, as an aside note to uh, the hospice question, it's not, although it may be, I was gonna say it's not out of the realm of uh, possibility that maybe, uh, you know, it could become um, part of the hospice uh, uh, pharmacopoeia, you know, I doubt it because, you know, how it has to be purchased, but uh, it would be, what do you think about that? I mean, you could be, uh, for aches and pains and nausea, you know, mm -hmm. but that, you know, then, then you're talking about uh, it being more like a drug. So I don't think, I don't know what. Mm -hmm. Well, we appreciate no, just your about. testimony. What we'd like to do right now is open it up for questions. Um, if you have time for that. So if people could just raise their hands and maybe put it, or there are questions in the chat you, and then we'll have, um, you can um, at, you know, direct those to Dr. Sparks. So you can do that now. And no I can't, questions? I can't see I the whole see, screen. I can't either. I don't, I don't see any questions in the chat. I don't see Candy any hands. Candy Mill is here. Let me see. Now, people, don't be shy. Ask, oh. ask your question. Any questions? It looks like uh, looks like Alicia Phillips may have her hand raised. I'm not sure if that was a hand raise. Yes. yes. I, hey, how are you all? I'm sorry, not on camera tonight, but um, I just have a, a testimony. Uh, my grand my grandbaby, she's nine months old, and I've just never seen a child teeth. Um, you know, she's teething. And so she was just so sick, just eyes watering and, you know, a fever. I mean, she just really was just in a bad place. And so um, I just took the Renew 28 gel, uh, rubbed her neck, her arms and the bottom of her feet and her legs. And do you know, her eyes begin to perk up. Uh, she began to just smile and play. And, and so she's mm -hmm. feeling so much better. And so um, I'm just, you know, just amazed at how the product has just really, really, uh, even for a nine month old to make her feel better uh, teething. And so uh, just to see it signal to her um, and her eyes and her cheeks begin to clear up. And, and um, so she was just drooling so bad and even the drooling process stopped. So um, I just want to say, if you kind of can expound on what it may do as far as uh, babies, if you may know anything a little bit more, or how we can administer to, um, you know, younger children um, of that age, or how much would we give, um, you know, a newborn of that age, I should say a toddler. Oh, for, well, it sounds like you did exactly the right thing. Um, it's non-toxic, so, uh, you know, the, now the, uh, so the, the, the redox, shouldn't um, have a, a dose limitation. Okay. Did you say you put it on her gums? Well, no, I just actually um, just rubbed her neck okay. um, and her cheeks. Um, I rubbed her arms and the bottom of her feet and her legs. And so just immediately we begin to see results. Um, over the weekend, she just really gave her mom a hard time. And so I saw her today. And she was just so pitiful. And I told her mother, I said, look, let me just rub her down. And instantly she <laughs> just felt so much better. And so, um, <laughs> but I did tell her mom to maybe uh, just maybe swap her mouth and she'll, you know, allow her to do that <laughs> tonight. Yeah. With the gel. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think, well, you know, one thing that just occurred to me is that, uh, you know, they're so small that they're going to be dose limited anyway. Right. right. Just because of their body surface area. So, but uh, I was thinking about that because uh, there's a new, uh, well, so there's a like a nine month old baby across the street from me and I haven't reached out to them to see, you know, I was thinking to see if the, if the baby's teething, she must be. Uh-huh. And if, the, if they're getting along okay with it, because right. babies have been teething for thousands of years. Right. <laughs> okay. Well, but, thank, but you, that, thank that, you. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I, I, I think you did exactly the right thing. I don't think, uh, there's any, and, and, she, and your mom could uh, just rub it on the, her gums it would be fine okay all right yeah. thank you I like that Alicia because um you know a lot of times people think this is a um you know it, you know just because it's a power suggestion that it just works but with babies and animals there's no placebo effect you know they're not expecting or even thinking about how this is going to work it just mm-hmm. works. So that just proves to people that, you know, you put this on your, on the, on the baby and she had results and it wasn't, you know, as a, as an older person, we think about it too much and think, okay, well, it's just a placebo effect, you know? Right. Um, so I think that's a pretty, pretty important there. Okay. Yeah. Thank it looks you. like Candy Mill has got her hand up is what I can see. Yeah. And I see Kirk and Karen as well. And Thomas, Dr. Hill. Good. So who is who's first? I think Candy. Okay. okay. Um, first of all, um, Vicki, thank you so much. Prior to me, me being a flight attendant and getting involved with CSEA, I used to work emergencies rooms. So oh. I, <laughs> I admire you for what you do. Um, so I have a question. Um, this is in regards to my grandson. He's 15 years old. Since he was two years old, he's never been able to urinate on his own. He has had to have, do a catheter. Um, a number of weeks ago, they finally did a bladder augmentation and did a correction, but they also found that there's a problem with his kidney and they are going to have to do a kidney t- transplant. She found, oh my God. <laughs> I know. I have been praying, praying on this. She finally has agreed to get him on Redox. Um, just signed up last night. And she talked to Donna Lynn. Um, Donna Lynn gave me the information on how to get him um, started on this to increase it. He goes to Children's Hospital. Um, the Children's Hospital in Seattle, um, the 20th, to be tested for um, the transplant donor thing. My question is, is when he does start on this, what is um, signs and what does she need to watch for with him on taking this for detox or anything else that he, his body might be going through that I can tell her to, to watch for. I mean, this is a um, situation. I'll say, uh, I, so um, he might, I don't know what size he is. Um, do you know, like, is he like uh, aesthetic or uh, overweight? Um, no, he's he's thin. He lost a lot of weight when he was in the hospital. They put him on a special diet in the hospital, and then he gets out. And then they're they were giving him stuff when he was in the hospital. He had to have a transplant. Um, I mean, a blood transfusion. Here, I just got out and I've got my mask on, but let me start my video. So anyway. Um, so, so I so I would just start him out on the uh, regular uh, two ounces because he's an adult. You know, if you think about it in uh, terms of prescription drugs, he's an adult uh, yeah. for for that from that aspect. So he can start out on on the regular dose and then make sure he uh, drinks enough water. He's got to drink half his weight in water. Okay. Um, and then and then back off on the dose a little bit and also. Um, you know, the amount of sodium in that in, in a SIA redox is not uh, significant. 
you know, it's it's like um, maybe Doria or, or, or Cindy, I can't ever remember the number of carrots there are in a bottle. <laughs> it's like two or three carrots. Yeah, so it's insignificant. So, you know, the nephrologist might freak out if they show him in the bottle, but uh, but no, he should he should be fine. All they have to do is just uh, just watch him for um, um, maybe like a rash might occur, maybe nausea, maybe uh, his blood pressure might go up, and then just decrease the dose and and add more uh, water. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you. Prayers for him, everyone. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And then putting the gel on his uh, feet you know, all around his neck and the bottom of his feet too. And his kidney area. Yes. I told her that and then also to put it in his navel. So I've heard a lot of it with that. And uh, uh, the navel and right um, um, where the ribs meet the breastbone, right at the end of the breastbone, that, that there's a big lymph channel right in there. So Okay. You know where I'm talking about I right at the end of your breastbone. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, put, great. Put it there. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate it. Think, uh, welcome. I think I see Kirk and Karen up next and then Dr. Hill. Uh good evening, everybody. Um just on the, you know, sharing as a hospice nurse, I can't even imagine, you know knowing what you have in your hands and, and not being able to share. But for patients that are dehydrated, even just carrying a the you know the spray bottle and um and telling her their families is that, you know, I have you know, I I I'd encourage you to hydrate your family member optimally with this, you know, that that can restore, um, you know, with, you know, patients that are dehydrated, how hard it is to, and I, I guess they don't do an IV on somebody that's on hospice, but being able to have that to, you know, to help hydrate a, a patient, uh, just, just the spray bottle, with what I've what what we've seen it do, and then to you know encourage them um, with that, where it's just spraying a mist um, into their into their mouth or into their onto their face, for that matter. Mark, are you talking about the spraying the redox? Yes, just spraying the redox to help uh -huh. you, know, you know being able encouraging their family to help their family member hydrate optimally so it's kind of tricky because um hydration at the end of life can be painful um there are definitely a lot of situations where hydration uh, is indicated to uh to help someone reach a goal that they need to reach like getting to the graduation tonight <laughs> or tomorrow but yeah. um yeah, uh, but I, I agree with you about spraying the redox or putting some redox gel. I think, uh, you know, I if I were going to go back into hospice, I would I take it with me all the time anyway. I would just, you know, uh, use it on areas that hurt. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it helps the patient. I don't need to, to tell them anything about it unless they ask, you know. Right. Um, tell them it's totally non-toxic. Uh, how do you feel now? <laughs> Right. I don't know. I haven't been in that situation, so. Yep. Well, I just, I really rely on my spray bottle for my vision. Um, and I always, whenever I get to the end of a sample tube of gel, um, when I can't get any to come out, I cut it in half. And I just start dipping my finger in there and rub it on my eye. And it's helped restore my I won't, I won't let them do injections in my eyes anymore. Um, I just go ahead and, and uh, finish up a sample tube of gel by dipping my finger in there and wiping it on my eyelid with my eye shut, you know, three times in five minutes. It always seems to give me relief when I'm having problems with my macular edema. 
Yep, yep, absolutely. Yeah, so the beauty of this this product, the molecules can be given in all kinds of different, um, I say you can pretty much put it in any orifice. So what he's talking about is the uh, redox signaling molecules in the liquid form, just putting it in a spray bottle, but you have to put it in a bottle that has no metal in it or it'll denature the molecules. And then, you know, you can spray it in your eyes. You know, some people get little plastic things and, and still, you know, in their ears or, um, you know, we have some people that have had feeding tubes and instilled it in that way and, uh, you know, rectally and just different, you know, ways because it is non-toxic and, you know, it helps with um, just allowing the body to heal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Let's say Dr. Hill is up next. Good afternoon, everybody. First of all, Dr. Sparks, thank you for being on the call. I'm sorry I was late to hear the, your initial um comments, but I want to thank all of you who are nurses. Uh, this is an exciting time, uh, Doria and Cindy, when you guys started this. Uh, I don't know if you all are all part of the uh, CEO Medical Board, but I do know that guests like myself who are not uh, privy to all of the, the nuances and the things that you guys have done as nurses or in profession, that did is, I'm sure you already made the disclaimer about that we don't treat cure, you know, any kind of condition or whatever, but people's testimonies are what they are. But my question was, as I as I joined in and I thought, you guys are doing such a repository of information. How do we help other nurses become a part of what you're doing? And is there a secret sauce? But what is it that we could do to recruit or sponsor and help others to join what you're doing because you ladies and gentlemen are doing a tremendous job. So you got any tips on how we can help get other medical professionals? Well, I, like, I, I'm starting with the retired medical professionals. <laughs> and, you know, the, the, uh, other than that, with the skincare, uh, uh, and I appreciate your question, Dr. Mill. Um, you know, I could go, and I haven't done it yet. I've been taking time off. I, I don't know. I think I was like burned to a crisp or something after, you know, when I, I retired just in time. <laughs> I've been, you know, it's been, been so weird, you know, not, not having a, that heavy schedule all the time. But no, I can, I want to go around to some, the dermatologist's office offices and uh you know make contact with them i get i think you just have to get out uh we just have to get out um uh, out and, and about and you never know who knows somebody you know so it's like a the ripple effect and you know the guy at the gym may uh may know you know he his father may be a doctor and he may have some health challenges or he, you never know who knows uh who knows people so uh, I think just get out there, but uh, I, I'm, you know, I'm going to uh, see maybe if I can work in, I don't know if I could get um, the nerve up to give a lecture on redox signaling to the retired physicians because they never, they've never heard of it. I guarantee you. <laughs> well, I think, what, would I don't you know that, yeah. what would you say, you know, Cindy? How would you answer that question? Well, I was going to say, I'm sure Dr. Sparks and you as well, Doria, um, with the medical professionals, sometimes we're the hardest to convince. So I have tons of friends that are dentists and doctors and nurses and physical therapists, and I've tried to share this with them. And again, it is stepping out of your comfort zone, because especially when you're talking to a doctor, you feel like, okay, we are usurping their knowledge because, you know, obviously they know more than we do um, because of the training they've had. But like I said, you have to go back and just take this technology on a leap of faith. I mean, but yeah, I struggle with getting people in and, and nurses. I do better with strangers. I was walking in Vanderbilt one day and this gentleman was looking for the cardiologist clinic and I was a liaison for a hospice company. So that was my territory was in Vanderbilt. So I told him I was going that direction and I walked him down to it. And we just started a conversation about all kinds of things. And politics and health care and and just things we said and talked about he said I feel like you and my wife would get along and I said really 
And I said, well, she may be interested in something I'm doing. So I, I, my hands were full. I could not get his information. So I handed in my card. I said, here, have her look at this. My email's on there, my phone number, you know, call me or email if she has questions. So I didn't have time to go into the whole thing. And I thought I'll never see that guy again or never hear from him or her. That night I got an email from the wife. She was very interested. She's actually a preferred customer now. She lives in Kentucky. So you just never know whose paths you're going to cross. But if this stuff is not real, why are so many colleges getting government funded grants to study this? Vanderbilt has one, Cornell University, Wake Forest, and the list goes on and on and on. And this is for this big, I mean, for this much money going into funding for college to study a science that's relatively new, and we have the technology patented in a bottle that is working, and we have, you know, like the Tarrant study. I just don't get it. Why is it so hard for people to just trust and try? I don't know. Yeah. Doria, and do I would say, anything? Tom, uh, you know, uh, Dr. Hill, I would say ask questions, you know, just to meet somebody. It's all about relationship, you know, talking to someone, just ask them where they are. And as you open up conversation, asking about family and, you know, what they do and what they like to do in their spare time, you know, though, then that'll kind of open up to that area, whether it be, you know, well, my you know, whatever it might, maybe my wife has a health issue or something. And then you can kind of, you know, say, well, I may have something that may help, you know, I don't always, um, I like to give, I don't like to make the expectations too high. I like to speak on, you know, this, hey, I may have something that may help you. Also, wellness, health and wellness coaches, a lot of nurses are going into that field. They're leaving the nursing hospital. I mean, I left the hospital too, um, in 2021 as well, um, after COVID. Um, but with nurses, most nurses are just get, leaving the field and they're becoming wellness coaches. And so this could be another tool in their toolbox. You know, could you be open to looking at something, you know, um, that may be helpful in helping others? you know, and then, you know, and just, and then send them the tool. You don't have to explain it. Just like, you know, we've got some questions in the chat, you know, we're going to send people to a tool or another video so that they can see that. And, you know, and you don't have to explain it to them. So it just kind of piquing their interest, but, you know, some will, some won't. And, um, you know, we have lots of people that, you know, I, I have, I have, I have someone that I've been sharing this for three years and, and all of a sudden had an issue and said, do you think maybe this would help me, you know, or like Alicia just shared about her, uh, I don't know she said it was her grandson or nephew, but, you know, I talked to her back in October, you know, and then there was an issue that kind of, um, happened in her life with her husband and she said you think this might help and I said you know it's worth it you know it's worth it and so if, if people want to experience this you can you know, of course get back to the people that you know invited you to this call but you know get on the product for you know 90 to 120 days because 30 percent of the people see results in the first month and 60 percent in the second month and 90 percent see results in the you know the third month so Right. Very good. So it's like Doria said, get back to the person. If you are, if any of this piqued your interest and you want to try it, or if you have that entrepreneurial spirit, like spirit, I never can get that out, like we do. And like Dr. Sparks is actually doing with her business. So it's all, it could be a side gig or it could be a full-time job. And we have plenty of people that are doing this full-time and you don't have to be medical. That's the thing. Most of the people doing this, they're not medical. They don't have a medical background. So anybody can do this. It's just talking to people, like Doria said, making those relationships and sharing what you have. Hey, it may not work. And we don't take it personally if you refuse, but we just want people to know about it and know that this could be a possibility for them. That's all we do. And there's great training too on, on you know, phrases, uh, scripts and phrases and, you know, how in, uh, I like what, what you both said about approaching people. So, yeah. And that's one thing I've <laughs> been doing is like <clears throat> trying to learn, learn the phrases and, and be more interested in, in them instead of being interesting. Um, yeah, it's a whole new uh, uh, skill set. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, so, yeah, but it's, uh, it's worth it. It's definitely worth it. Okay. If we don't have any other questions, Dory, you want to give a quick little intro about who our guest speaker is for next Tuesday? 
Yes. Yeah, so a couple things. A lot of people like to uh, know, know. I have these videos, and so what we've done, and we have a YouTube channel now called Nur uh, Redox Nurse Talk. No, Redox. Yeah. So you can just go to YouTube and go put the at sign Redox Nurse Talk. And so if it's okay with you, um, Dr. Sparks, would it be okay if we make your video public up to this evening? Oh uh, yeah, that's fine with me. Okay. I'm so fine with you. <laughs> okay. So yeah. it'll be uploaded. You know, it takes about, it'll probably, we probably won't have it uploaded until probably tomorrow, but you'll see other videos on there from past um, nurse talk shows. And, um, and then we have uh, a respiratory therapist that has a tremendous testimony. Uh, his name is Chuck. And um, he is on a site called realredoxresults.com. The password is redox. And he's number 77. So if you want to catch a little glimpse of that testimony, that's where that is. So that's who will be here on next Tuesday. So we're here every Tuesday, 7 p.m. Uh, Central Time, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Same site, re, uh, redoxnursetalk.com. So there's no Zoom link. You just go to that and that'll get you to us. So thank you. Thank you, Dr. Thank Sparks, you. so much uh, for coming on tonight. You're welcome. I enjoyed it. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. And we'll see everyone next Tuesday night. Sounds wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, ladies.